Amen. Take your Bible in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 55. Yes. Hallelujah. So we have one Sunday, two Sunday service. We'll do it like this. We'll do it like this so to avoid crowd in the church. Hallelujah. If we bring everybody in the building, we'll be, there'll be too much crowd and it's not good for we are doing this so we can be separated. Hallelujah. Amen. First, Luke chapter 1, verse, please may you stand for the reading. 46 to 55. 1, 2, 3, go. Please may you stand for the reading. Luke chapter 1. Yes. Verse 46. Yes. And Mary said. And Mary said. My soul magnifies the Lord. Yes. And my spirit has rejoiced all my sins. Yes. For he has regarded the lowly state of Servant. Come on. For behold, henceforth all generation will call me blessed. Yes. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Yes. And holy is his name. Holy is his name. Yes. And his mercy is on those who fear him. Come on. From generation to generation. Yes. He has shown strength with his arm. Yes. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. My God. He has put down the mighty forms of the throne uh-huh. and exalted the Lord. Uh-huh. He has filled the hungry with good things. Yes. And the rich he has sent away. From. My God. He has helped his servant Israel uh-huh. in remembrance of his words. Hey. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his people. Uh huh. You good? 55? Okay. Spirit of the living God. No matter how much I pray, my prayer will not be enough to satisfy your greatness. That's why I want to thank you for the word. When we are broken down and tired, you sent your word to deliver us. Bless this word. Magnify, magnify your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You can have a seat. God bless you guys. God bless you everyone. Hallelujah. I am forever thankful. You see, if you cannot thank your neighbor for the little bit of thing they have done for you, I doubt that you can thank God. If, if you cannot thank your leader, if you cannot thank your brother at the church, if you cannot thank your pastor, or if you cannot thank the sisters of the church or the brothers of the church, I doubt that you will be thankful to the Lord. Because how can you be thankful to God when the person you see next to you, you are not thankful to them? That's why uh, Thanksgiving is not only when you come and you thank God. No. Thanksgiving is also to sit and to remember people that bless you. Even people that do not bless you. You understand what I'm saying? Because at times, the devil was needed for you to become who you are. And I do agree with me. We can celebrate Christianity however we want to celebrate Christianity. But without Judah, Christianity will not happen. Christianity. Yes, yeah, so so I will dare yeah, say thank you to that for sacrificing yourself. For being the traitor. Because without you, without you, the gospel was not going to be preached. Yes, God has many ways to do things. But you, you, you came as a volunteer for the devil to use you. Hallelujah. And I also want to thank everyone for this whole year. You see, let me tell you something. Lots of people can give up in many things. By you, you don't give up. And because you don't give up, you must learn to thank yourself. I'll come back to this. When you read this song, it's actually a song uh, uh, wrote by Mary. Mary, the, the fiancé of Joseph. When the angel came to visit Mary, Mary uh, was given a prophecy. Amen. By Gabriel saying, Gabriel, uh, she will bear a child. A child will be, she will be, she will, she will conceive a child by the power of the Holy Ghost. And then when she received that prophecy in the book of Luke, uniquely, she went to uh, um, the mother of the wife of Zachariah. I forgot her name. Elizabeth. Hey, she went to Elizabeth. And then when she went to Elizabeth, as soon as Elizabeth connected to her, the baby inside of Elizabeth leaped because of the spirit of the Lord was in the birth of them. 
This is how you recognize that somebody has the Holy Spirit because the Lord testifies to you. Whatever you feel is what I feel. What When we are in the plane of the Lord, when I feel something, you feel the same thing. Hallelujah. So when Elizabeth received her, they exchanged their talk. So Mary wrote this song. To thank the Lord for all that the Lord has done for her. Now mind you that Mary never prayed to receive a child. Mary never prayed to have Jesus. Mary never prayed to have Jesus. I repeat, Mary never prayed to have Jesus. It's not everything you prayed for that God gives you. See, sometimes you want to thank God for what he gives you. But you must also thank God for what he did not give you. You know, you also want to thank God. You ask God. You thank God for what God gave you. But also there are some things that you never ask and God gave you. Those ones that are even more important. Because if I ask you and you give me, then I am expecting it. But then when I did not ask you, and you still gave me, oh my God. Hallelujah. So Mary wrote the song, and she said, for example, and Mary said, my soul magnified the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state. Of his nature. The Lord looked down to Mary and she put her face down. She put her face down. She, he got deep his face, deep inside, deep inside, deep inside, into the dust and look at uh, look upon us and say, I will help you, I will save you. My spirit will overshadow you. Hallelujah. I hope the sun is good. Uh, it's good. Amen. Hallelujah. For he has regarded the lowly state of his mid servant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed by God. He said, she said, all generation. And this song is not, is a prophecy for her. Are you following me? She said, all generation will call me blessed. That's probably why they are worshiping her today. Because what she carries was a world-changing thing. But let me tell you something. You cannot talk about my blessing if you don't talk about me. Because he said, for, for who is mighty has done great things for me. Tell your neighbor, the Lord has done great things for me. Oh, uh, you are not saying it well. The Lord has done great things for me. Yesterday, yesterday I was sitting home, and then my brother Pastor Oliver came and he gave me some good news. And all day, all night, all night, I was so happy. I was so happy. I said, "My brother will come," and I told him my testimony too. And he said, "My brother will come from so far. We comes from very far. It is so difficult to learn the life journey of earth. The days of men is full of battle." But God, at the end of the day, makes sure that you have a, a, a little smile on your face. Ah, I said, my brother, what you are telling me, I am so happy. I almost tested him last night, in the middle of the night, because I couldn't sleep. The Holy Spirit keep me up to test. I said, my brother, what you just tell me, I am so happy. It's just the, it's just the tip of the high today. Uh, if people can have the revelation to dive under the water, to see what is inside. That's why the Bible says somewhere. I understand it in my own English. Ears I have not heard. Eyes I have not seen. Nose I have not smelled. Mouth I have not spoken. Hand did not touch. You guys know already how we go down. That's how we go down. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, and his mercy is on those who fear him. For generation to generation. Let me tell you something. I, buy, I, 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 I pity people. When everything goes bad. They say God is bad. I pity you. The God I serve. Look. Between good and God. There is one good. In another word. The goodness and godness. Is not far. They are both the same. Between good and God. You only have to add one O. 
Don't tell me God is not good. Even when he turned difficult on you, it is in his goodness. He has put down the mighty from the throne and exalted the Lord. It is called favor. Favor is the manifestation of grace. When God removed the qualified and put the disqualified, that's why I remember the other day, God told David, said, David, remember where you come from. When you were from behind the ship, and I took you and I placed you ahead of my people. In another word, the boy had no education. When God has seen you, your education doesn't see you. The boy had no education. Raised to be a shepherd for life. But then when God has seen him, Hey, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hey, verse 53. He has filled the hungry with good things. That's why today we're going to offer you good things. Please make sure you check on him every now and then. You know, if he, if he, if he, he said, he has filled my soul, my belly with good things. Ham, collard green, mashed potatoes, corns. Good thing. I said, good thing. The Lord has filled your soul with good things. Let the people say amen. The Lord has filled your soul with good things. Let the people say amen. Let the people say I love the Lord. My God. Hallelujah. He said, you have filled the hungry with good things. And the rich has set him away empty. He has helped his servant Israel. And in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? You see, sometimes, sometimes in life, you have to think yourself. Thanksgiving is a thanksgiving to God. It's also a thanksgiving to my neighbor. It's also... A thanksgiving to myself. Let me tell you something. 100 days of fasting is not easy. I congratulate me too. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Leading the people of this church is not easy. But I keep them together during this pandemic. I congratulate myself. I congratulate myself for being past of favor. I congratulate. Let me tell you something. You must celebrate every little bit of achievement of your life. Don't ever wait to see the big achievements. You don't receive the big achievement because you don't thank yourself for what you have done. That's why I shop good. I think myself good. Even if I have $20 left, I'll spend $10 in shopping. I'll save $1. I'll eat $1, $3 with my kids. And I put something in it. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to celebrate yourself. You have to celebrate every little bit of thing you have done well. As a matter of fact, you have to be proud of yourself. You have to, you have to be proud for not fornicating. You have, you, have, you have to be proud for not drinking. You have to be proud for coming at church on time. You, are, you have to be proud. You have to be proud to pay your tithe. When you are not paying your tithe, something touched you. Now you are paying your tithe. Say, I am proud of myself. I am proud of myself because I can understand the Bible. I am proud of myself because I can fast now. Look. I, look here. Eh? Yes, we are not saved by our works. But we are saved by our gra by grace. However, a good Christian must demonstrate his works. So we work in grace. We don't work according to the law. So my works glorify God. If I don't celebrate my works, I am hypocrite. Let me tell you something. Some people come and tell me, I don't like money. What are you working for if you don't like money? So you love money. Don't say, I don't want all the praise. 
Don't say I don't want recognition. You are lying. Because if you work in a place for many years without recognition, you resign. So tonight, today, I want to tell you, recognize yourself. For yourself, for doing good for yourself. Recognize yourself for maintaining yourself in the ways of the Lord. Think yourself because where everybody could have gone and get it easy, you stay with the Lord. Oh yes. So I recognize myself for the blessing of the Lord. I thank God and I celebrate every achievement. Let me tell you something. Ungrateful people are always grateful with themselves. Hallelujah. Thank yourself for doing good. Bless yourself for doing awesome. Be happy for yourself when you achieve something. After a whole day at work, you come home say, I take my life. I take myself. When you, when you bring food on the table and your children are eating, say, I take myself. Because I fulfill my responsibility of a part of it. Today in my house, people are eating. Thank you. Thank Pastor Eric for being a dad. When I see, I say, I thank myself for changing your life. Hallelujah. Remember, the same way you treat yourself is how demon will treat you. If you treat yourself evil, demon will treat yourself evil too. Bible says Jabez was honored among his brothers. What more is he going to ask as a honorable man that God will not give him? Hallelujah. I say celebrate yourself. You will not lose weight. And you, uh, 20 pounds this year. And you only lose one pound. Celebrate for this one pound. Celebrate for this one pound. This one pound is a milestone. Everybody start with one. Then two. Then three. Then four. Then five. Then six. Till twenty. If you don't celebrate the small achievements, you'll be disappointed by yourself. If somebody ever tell you, is that all you have done? Say yes. What have you done? That's why I celebrate myself well, well. And I have no regrets. I thank myself for what I've achieved so far. You, you have to stop being sick humble. You are, you are, your, your humbleness is not real. You... The one day I was saying to somebody, good job. It's not okay. You must take it. You must accept it. Congratulate yourself. When from yesterday where you were to now, congratulate yourself. I think me, look at you. I doubt there any person that will pull up with you. But I keep you. I think myself. <laughs> Jackson, do you read the real fast? I think myself. Think yourself and celebrate every achievement. You want to throw a three point and you missed. Celebrate it because you could use your hand. Celebrate it because you could have it. We went to home center, we share food. I said, thank you, Pastor Eric, for giving food for somebody. I, do you guys know how much it feels? I think I'm speaking like this. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want this anointing, but you know, sometimes it's necessary. Amen. Celebrate it. Win is part as well. Your spiritual maturity is defined on how you behave in that time. It takes Christian in a bad time to see the attitude. You wanna learn, you wanna know somebody through faith, wait till you face on them, you fail on the exam. The Bible says somewhere in the book of Ecclesiastes. I think and 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 desire is the perfect one. Something like this. I believe that I've seen it. With a sad face, your heart may be happy. You understand? You must learn to celebrate God in difficult times. Let me tell you something. 
some of the stuff I have praised God. You may not know it, but then when I come on Sunday here, you would think that this is the most blessed person ever. But I never make mention of what I go through personally. Because I don't want it to take over me. I've learned to celebrate God in the bad times. Somebody holler, God, I thank you for the bad times. Can I tell you something? Anything that is sweet, you know it's sweet when you are faced with bitterness. Oh my God, my God, my God. Sweetness is different by the bitterness you have tasted before. Hallelujah. In French, we say, tout ce que Dieu fait est bon. In another word, it means everything God does is good. Have you noticed that, like I was saying earlier, between God and good, there is only one God? Simple. In another word, whether you really, you wait, when you put one O in between G and D, you become good. You can never remove the goodness from God. It is impossible. So when something looks bad, it is good for God. That's what Romans says. So you can know the good will of God, the acceptable will of God, and the perfect will of God. Notice that there is no bad will of God in it. So when something is bad, God can turn it onto good. <laughs> ah, my God. Give him all the praise in here. My daughter, keep checking, eh? This is so good. People will not be eating up because there is no food. Hallelujah. Take for me Exodus. Take for me Exodus. Take for me Exodus. Exodus. Are you with me? Exodus chapter 15. Verse 22 25. Verse 22 25. 1, 2, 3, go ahead. Exodus 15, verse 20. Yes. Then Miriam, the prophetess, the uh-huh. sister of Aaron, yes. took the timbrel in her hand, yes. and all the women went out after her yes. with timbrels and with dancing. Yes. And Miriam answered them, Yes. Sing to the Lord, yes. for he has triumphed gloriously. Yes. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. My God, yes. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur. Yes. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Yes. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara. Yes. For they were bitter. Yes. Therefore the name of of it was called Mara. Mara. Uh And the people complained against Moses. The people complained against Moses. What shall we drink? Uh So he cried out to the Lord. So he cried out to the Lord. Uh And the Lord showed him a tree. Can I preach? Can I preach? Mama Lincoln. Go, go ahead, finish. When he cast it into the water, uh-huh. the water were, were made. You see, this story, that was uh, Miriam, the sister of Aaron. As a matter of fact, they never said the sister of Moses. They said the sister of Aaron. Prophesied, singing. This song, she wrote it as soon as they crossed the Red River, the Red Sea. Red Sea. When they cross it, they were high, they were happy. So she started prophesying with all the women. She started singing. Bo, 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 bo. Day one, day two, day three. There were no more water. And the Bible said the people complained and couldn't marry. The same Mary that sung Hallelujah Hosanna yesterday, three days ago. We are Sunday today, Saturday. Friday. On Friday she was singing at the overnight. On Sunday because there is no more water. Look what the people begin to say. Read that for me. Read. Read. What will we, shall we drink now? What shall we drink now? Go ahead. So he cried out to the Lord. No, 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 no. The verse up. The people oh, murmur. And the people complain. And the people Moses. begin to complain. How in the world? The God that you are complaining against. Three days ago, he split the water and you went dry, you went through the water dry land, dry, dry, dry ground. And three days after, you open your mouth 
and you are saying all this nonsense, you got a problem. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Complain and, and, and dis, dissatisfaction always kill things easy. Hallelujah. We are a generation we complain. <laughs> we complain more than we give testimony. Look, we say more bad things than more good things. Can I talk to you? This generation, I've never seen a generation of complainers like this. Uh, when it's summertime, they say it's so hot. When it's for fall time, they say it's too cold. When it's winter time, they say it's too cold. I cannot come out. What is your final problem? Day one, day two, day three, people begin to say the most sin. And Moses pray. Let me tell you something. Let me discourage you, dear Christian. It's not because you complain that God will do that. It is because somebody prayed. So the Bible says, Moses prayed to the Lord. It's never when you complain that God is going to do move. Never. God did not move, move by your complaint. Oh, oh, Lord. Long time ago, you have not done it. It doesn't move God. I say complain doesn't move God. But when Moses pray, tell your neighbor, switch your complaint onto prayer. You are not saying it well. Switch your complaint to prayer. God never listen to the people when they complain. But then when Moses, the only one that don't complain, pray, God bring the water. Me, I have learned one thing. To switch my complaint to prayer. When they say, hey, how about this? Why this and this? I say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Look. Is there any complaint in the building? May the Lord deliver you. I break every spirit of complaint. I put them in a spiritual jail. I put a demon in heaven that your complaint be made at the cross. May you pray and not complain. May you praise and not complain. I do not hear your amen. Your amen as a bowler. Now think about this. You are food. Someone is that. Amen. Unless you decide to fast, you have food in your refrigerator. Some people from the cooling room all the way down to the refrigerator. As a matter of fact, they have another chest, uh, chest freezer. The one you open like this, there is food in it. So, you have food, somebody else does it. You have a place to stay, somebody else does it. You have food and water to eat and to drink, somebody else does it. You have mother to call from work sometime. Somebody else does it. You have a father you call dad. Somebody else does it. You have air to breathe. Somebody else does it. You have leg to walk on. Somebody else does it. You have eyes to see. Somebody else does it. You are healthy. Somebody else is not. You have a car to drive. Somebody else does it. You, are, you have children. Somebody else does not. You have, you have a husband. Somebody else doesn't. And you have something to <laughs> say. She says it. Uh, <laughs> Somebody else doesn't. And you have, a, you have a church to pray. Somebody else doesn't. You have a job to pay your bill. Somebody else does not. Even Walmart refused the application. Somebody else doesn't. But you have something to say. Can you imagine? Can I tell you a story? Long time ago, we are very small. And we had this uncle who came out. My uncle came out. What happened is he gave us, you know, when uncle comes, they give, they give you guys this money. Now, my problem is when I was little, there used to be this big coin. The same for us, it was big. It was huge like this. But then it was the smallest, it had small value. So in the back of my mind, when I have this big coin, it means I have more than everybody. Now, when he came, he gave me a small coin. It's the smallest coin, but it has greater value. Second from. 
So when he gave me that coin, I threw it away. I said, I don't want it. I want a big coin. He said, okay, because you threw the coin away, I'm not going to give you anything. But you threw it away, amen, I'm going to give you some of it. And I tried all day. Up to now, this is still in my mind. That everything you throw away can be a blessing for somebody. Now you will complain one day. The job you quit is a blessing for somebody else. The friend you disregard is a blessing for somebody else. The car you insult when it breaks out, you will show me who will take you to walk. Amen. So we live in a generation they are never satisfied with anything. Can you one day wake up and say, God, I thank you for what I have. Say, God, I thank you for what I have. <laughs> Can I tell you something? The people that design your clothes, they are not with you. But how you know you are dressed well? It's because when they are designing, they were thinking about you. You are going to tell me that everything God did, he, he was not thinking about you. Everything, when he put this building in his mind, in 2020, a church, the overcomers meeting was going to be building. So when God inspired the plan of the building to the owner, he said, make sure you put this room here. Make sure you put this here. Make sure you put that here. Because 20 years from now, my people will come and use it, make it easy for them. Look, unless you have no idea of who God, your Christianity is great. Spiritually is called the great master, the great architect. He measures everything in each. Everything you have, imagine yourself somebody has done it. Somebody told me the other day, Pastor, I envy you. I turned around and said, And they're like, what? I wish I have what you got. And I tell you, I say, I wish I have what you have. We live in a generation where we wish we have what somebody else wishes. But please, can we change our mindset and bless the thing? The Bible said, "So what do you have?" She said, "They said we have five five loaves of bread and then and then and then two fish." He said, "Bring it to me." The Bible says he took it and he blessed the Lord. He thanked the Lord. When he broke it down, he broke it. And 5,000 men ate bread that day. Why? Because God blessed the small. You want to be a millionaire? Bless your one sins. Hallelujah. So many people mistreat what they have. Jesus Christ. Everything you have, somebody else does. The nice height you have, somebody else does. The other day I went to Walmart and this woman looked at me. Can you please take this? And when I look, she looked like this. I said, Well, you are blessed. You say, God took it. I said, Man, can you reach down there, please? And she grabbed us in your place because you are able to do well. Bless God for me. I cannot think God. Mary, Mary, in a merriness. She cannot, she could have prayed her word that she wanted to pray. Make it back in the whole life. She could have imagined that one day she will carry Jesus. She will be carrying Jesus. Mary! Mary! She was virgin, but in her whole life, Edda, she could have never imagined she would be the mother of Jesus. That's why I love God. Because what you don't imagine is what you <laughs> ah, mon Dieu. What you don't imagine. And you're sitting here. Which one of you guys has ever imagined yourself in where you are today? The, me particularly, never. Uh, Jackson, she never imagined that you were the mother. Never. Hallelujah. Grab your hand for Jesus. Tell your neighbor you have something to thank God about. 
Don't be ungrateful. Can I tell you something important that I found somewhere? They say, they say when you get what you want, it's God's direction. When you get when you get what you don't you don't want, that's God's protection. <laughs> you may not understand why God refused some stuff. Maybe it's God's protection. If God has blessed you with what you want, maybe we are going to be a slave to success. If God, I've, I've blessed God, eh? when you walk in the perfect will of God, what God doesn't give you is not yours. You don't struggle to have anything. He blessed you. Hallelujah. You may not understand, but sometimes God knows why he refused you. Can I tell you something? Do you know that the devil can bless you with something so he can go off track? Do you even know the devil can even give you a job so you can start your Friday prayer? We, let me tell you a story. We're in the average course and we had prayer session for everyone that don't have a job. In a matter of 30 days, the prayer group disappeared. You know why? Day one, day two, after seven days, ten people just start having a job. So on Sunday they start giving testimony. We thank the Lord because the job I was doing for He gave me. But then in the second day, the Friday prayer for jobless people closed. The devil was like, Ah, they pray too much. Let me just give them the job, and they will start praying. So, so sometimes many things you ask for, the devils hear. They say, You know what? That, uh, Demon, witchcraft, let, 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 let them have it. So they'll start asking. You want to see people in a lazy time, wait till they get lost. Can I tell you something? What you did to have your blessing is what you do to people. Uh huh. So sometimes the devil can bless you with something. Once you have it, when the break breaks you, you wake up. Yes. It's not every blessing that you have. The witches of your family, you pray and you disturb them. You know what? Get busy, witch. Get new car. Get house. Then you think you are blessed. Then you reduce it. Yeah, and, then, and then as you are distracted, you bring it down. Least thing you know, the devil is in the bedroom. Then you wake up. So, people of God, stay vigilant. I say, stay vigilant. Amen. I say, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In the good and the bad, give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for Jesus. Let me tell you another thing. God has a plan for everything. And the plan of God. They are unfolded as you go along in life. Maybe God called you to do something, something I don't know. You have no idea how you get there. But as you progress in life, God puts you close and around people. He connects you with people. He connects you with a group of people. He puts you in a city. He puts you in a situation. And as you grow up, you fulfill the plan of God. The plan of God are somewhere unfolded as you progress. Watch this. Some miracle Jesus will perform in the, in the, in the, in the full gospel. He will tell the people, go. As they begin to start working, the miracle will come to pass. Let me tell you one thing that you may have forgotten. That when God wants to bless you, maybe you have no idea of how he's going to look like. But you must progress in life. 
God will take you to connect with people. He will take you to some lands. He will take you to some places you have no idea. You must say, God, if this is your plan, I am all for it. Say with me, God, if this is your plan, I am all for it. Hallelujah. Can I tell you one more thing? And I'll close. See, Thanksgiving is also a demonstration of faith. You know why? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. When you thank God, it's a demonstration of faith. You know why? Let us pray. Thanksgiving. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Keep reading to three. For by it, the elders obtain the good testimony. Uh -huh. By faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. Uh -huh. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Watch this. Can I explain? Faith, people that give thanks to God, they know they have faith. Can I get this? Watch this. Watch this. Faith. Through faith, the unseen will be seen. Do you agree? Through faith, the unseen will be seen. <laughs> Without faith, the sick will remain sick. Right? Without faith, the poor will remain poor. Right? Without faith, the thief will remain a thief. And without faith, the ungrateful will remain ungrateful. <laughs> uh, 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 when you have faith, you disregard the actual appearance of the physical realm and your senses and you declare unto them what they should be. So watch this. Every great evangelist that performed miracles, P.P. Joshua, all of those people, when they see a sick person, the first thing they start to do, they say, I thank you, Lord, because you have already done. And why would you thank God when we, our eyes see that nothing is done? Because in the kingdom mentality, you never start going to God. When you go to God, you never start asking anything. You say, oh, my Lord, live eternally. Thank you for all this. In the kingdom, we thank God for what he has not given because we already know that he already provided. Uh, it is an act of faith, either. People that celebrate Thanksgiving, they don't only celebrate what they have, they also celebrate what is coming. So I want to celebrate today what is coming. Uh, yeah, God, so I want to celebrate what is coming. You have no idea what is coming for me. Remember when I was preaching the other day? Remember when I was preaching the other day? I said, it is natural. Some things are natural. You don't see it coming, but it's coming. American people, you don't see, say, you don't see me coming. Bro, you don't see me coming. It is coming. Rosa Kandala, blah, blah, blah. He said, you disregard the actual physical appearance of things and, you, and your senses. And you declare unto them what should, it should be. Watch the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. What does he say? What does he say? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Is that bon? What does he say? He says, Read. For we walk by faith, uh -huh. not by sight. That's a very spiritual verse. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. Uh -huh. Not by sight. In another word, we, we, we walk by what we don't see. Amen. Not by what we see. Amen. We walk by what we don't see. What you don't see should make you walk. What do you see? And what you don't see. If you walk by what you see, you walk.
The real thanksgiving is celebration of faith. Celebration of faith. I thank God because my three million dollars church is already built. Pass of favor. Look, watch. Oh, on a I thank God, Jackson. I thank God because the prayer camp of Omaha is already built. Lord, I thank you because it is already built. Three, four, five million dollars. What is it for you? You use it to buy time. God, it's already done. Look at Mama Lincoln. She look at me. I am serious about this business. You think I will leave it? I thank God because it's already done. I was looking at this man of God, Chris Oyakilome. He was praying for somebody. The person, even me, myself, evangelist, I'll say, enter, say, so come, let us pray together. This woman was dead. Dead. Skinny dead. Oh, Lord. Then people start praising the Lord. We thank God because he's already done. And then he says something. He said, he said if God put me here, in your mind, you think, you think if he, she came here to die, what would God put there in the middle of a stadium of 4,000 people? No, 40,000 people. Why? Why? Why would God even mind to bring her here? You all remember the story of Lazarus? He said, I bless you, oh my Lord, because everything I ask you, you do it. Before he even commanded Lazarus to come out, he began to bless his father. It's impossible. Pourquoi Dieu va envoyer un malade ici pour me mettre down? Why would God bring a sick person here to put shame on me? God, if you took him here, therefore do it. And then he went in the name of Jesus, turned up, and she goes, <coughs> and she got up, and the whole thing the moon bombastic. And they're like, this is how God works. I said, this is how God works. 